Since having had my new Yamaha 25 horsepower four-stroke, I was keen to push my boating boundaries even further this year. Unfortunately, this fickle summer weather on the west coast of Scotland had prevented me attempting my plan of a circumnavigation of the island of Skye, a distance of well over 300 miles. Then, during the second week in August, a suitable weather window of light winds for five days appeared in the forecast, so I decided to go for it. This video illustrates that for long multi-day adventures, I have to be totally flexible in my plans, and it is not only the weather that affects them. After all, I am only human. I think it's the first time this summer that I was launching an early morning high tide and the weather was perfect. Solid sunshine and flat calm. The boat was loaded with a hundred litres of fuel and camping supplies for four days. I knew I would need more to get right round sky. But that was taken care of as I had my banking card and I knew several places where I could resupply. I was even prepared to camp out as long as was required to complete the journey even if it meant landing and sitting out a period of rough weather until things improved again. In other words, I was giving it my best shot. I took the car and trailer home before setting off, and everything was going as planned, as I skimmed down lovely Lakhetiv heading for the open sea. I had, of course, timed my passage under the Connell Bridge, to coincide with slack water as we were only a couple of days away from a very high spring tide. I do confess that the high spring tide was a worrying me slightly as it meant going round the northern tip of sky and spring tides and Rubahoonish is a well known tide race. If I hit it wind against tide then I knew I'd be in for an interesting time. Still, there was little point in worrying about it until I get there. So I settled down to enjoy my smooth passage to Lismore Lighthouse and the start of the sound of Mull. The tide race off Lismore Point was also quiet due to my timing. For me, at sea in a small boat, it's as important knowing the state of the tide and its direction at all times as it is knowing the weather forecast. And of course, I think it's also important to know places to stop for a break, and more important, places to camp overnight, which can be few and far between. And as I was now choking for a coffee, I pulled over into Innermore Bay, my first stop of the day. This time, instead of admiring the views, I checked my route plans. As my memory is not as good as it used to be, I have everything written down. I carry a printout of the forecast for the next five days, and also the times of the tides. Of course, forecasts can and do change, so I get my brother to text me a brief summary of the next day's forecast, and in return I give him my position so that someone always knows where I am each day which I consider important when travelling alone. I also carry a brief illustration of my route, showing overnight stops and places that I know I can camp at. Mileage have been accurately measured so as I know how much fuel to take. I am also aware of places where I can refuel when required. Satisfied my route plan was in order, I then took the time to admire the views. Then jump back in my boat to continue on my way up the sound of Mull. It was while approaching Tobermory and Island of Mull, 
that something unplanned for happened that was going to have a major impact on my carefully prepared route plan. I was thinking of getting some additional supplies in Tovermory, so I looked out my bank card and then discovered I could not remember the PIN number, which meant I could not use the card until I remembered it again. I wished I had written it down along with the tide times, but hindsight is a wonderful thing. I shrugged it off thinking I would soon remember it the following day, so continued on my way to the first night stop at Loch na Dromna Bui. It was lovely seeing the familiar flat piece of grass that they camp on when in the area. I landed at low water and secured the boat before sitting at the edge of the grass to scoff my lunch. I tried to stop thinking about my forgotten pin number, but it was like a niche that needed scratched. The more I thought about it, the more numbers I imagined were a missing pin number. Then I unloaded the boat and set up the tent, and passed some more time by having a coffee. I would have been perfectly happy in paradise if only I could have remembered that pin. I knew if I could stop thinking about it, it would come back to me automatically, and I was grateful it was only the pin I had lost and not the card. As it was still early afternoon, and to take my mind off things, I decided to go a little sightseeing. So jumped back in the boat and headed out of Loch na Drom na Beauty and headed for Loch Dierkes. love going through the narrow, shallow channels of this area, relaxing and enjoying the scenery. and it did take my mind off my forgotten pin number until I landed and started cooking my dinner again and then I started thinking about it the worrying thing being I still couldn't remember it I enjoyed my Tesco ready-made Indian dinner washed down with three tins of gravy I watched the tide come in and then enjoyed watching the sunset before retiring to my tent I confess to not sleeping well my mind was still trying to remember my bank card pin number. Then just as I was falling asleep, I heard the werewolf of Loch na Drom na Bui wander around the campsite. I recorded his grunts as he looked for his latest victim. I realise it's probably only a stag, but alone in the darkness in the middle of the night, my imagination can frighten me. Then, to really make my night, the air bed developed a slow leak, and every hour I had to get off it to blow it back up again. I got out of bed in an overcast but calm morning, and as soon as I put my head out the tent, the midges descended in their millions and had me for breakfast, before I had time to even think of mine. And to really make matters worse, I had to shove my boat into deeper water to stop it drying out in the now falling tide. Unfortunately, I left the convenience zip in my dry suit trousers open, so flooded my clothes. It was almost the last straw as I was ready to go home. 
The midges were making the most of my low mood by sucking my blood till it hurt. I mention in all this that it's worth knowing that sometimes things don't always go to plan. The only thing that stopped me from going home was I'd arranged to meet Douglas later on that morning. So I set off on my boat to get away from the midges, then settled down to a bit of fishing, opposite Tobermory to await his arrival. I didn't have to wait long before I saw Douglas heading into Tobermory Bay, so followed him in. He kindly bought breakfast and as we scoffed sandwiches on his boat, the sun came out, my midge bite stopped itching and I was in a far better mood again. Despite the fact that I still couldn't remember my bank card PIN number. I did try the number I thought it should have been, but the auto teller refused it, so I accepted I would have to wait to get home again, and hope I had it written down somewhere. The plan for the rest of the day was I would leave my boat at the campsite and Douglas would pick me up from there in his boat and we would have a jolly together somewhere. Heading back to Loch na Drum na Beauty, I was delighted to see some splashes in the water. These guys really brightened my mood and made my day, as I've not seen many this year. They are common dolphins and they were happy to escort my boat. Certainly, a more welcome sight than seeing millions of midges. They soon get tired of showing off, and they went their way and I went mine. I dropped anchor just off the campsite and then clambered aboard Douglas's boat who had followed me in. I mentioned to Douglas that I was thinking of going round Ardna Merkin Point later that afternoon, but just not sure, as forecast was for winds blowing to 20 miles per hour. He kindly suggested we have a look round the point in his boat, which is much bigger and faster. So that's what we did. of the GoPro flattens the waves, but I now decided to go round Ardna Merkin Point the following day, when the weather was to be much calmer. And as it was still early afternoon, we decided to visit the village of Salon in Loch Sooner. take long to get there, or to get back. Douglas was doing over 40 knots, which is well over twice the speed my little boat goes on. I was duly dropped off at the camp spot before Douglas headed back to Tobermory. I must admit that while I enjoy my own company and adventures like this, it's great to a friend to pick me up when things are not going quite as planned. My thanks to Douglas for making my day a much brighter one. It was a calm, windless evening as I settled back into my solitary ways. By this time I erected bug off shelter, which I'd been too lazy to put up the night before because of the wind. It too saved my day as I happily slurped beer behind the netting, which kept the vampire midges at bay. I had an early night as I was shattered. 
The werewolf woke me around midnight as per normal, and I had to block the lilo several times before morning. But I woke in a far happier mood. I was now going to go to Sky, which is continued in part two of this box set. I hope you've enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. (laughs) 